Good morning. I'm a sex champion. What sort of trophies can you offer me? A what champion, sir? A sex champion. I'm magnificent in the sack, and I want some kind of shiny prize to prove that fact to my wife. Right. Well, well, well I tend to specialise in sports trophies, sir. Football, rugby, darts, that sort of thing. So I need to commission a sex trophy of some kind. Oh, well, well I, I don't actually make the trophy, sir. I, I just buy them wholesale from a company in China. This isn't the kind of can-do attitude I'd expect from a small businessman in today's economic climate. You should be grateful for my custom. Well, perhaps I can improvise something suitable. Well, make sure it looks good. I don't want some tatty half-baked sex trophy. I want quality. <laughs> Of course, sir. Well, um, how about this, for starters? This, this is one of our top-of-the-range snooker trophies, sir. S see how the little plastic man is bending over the table? Yes, yes. He's quite attractive, isn't he? Well, as little plastic men go, I'd say he was one of the better-looking ones, sir, yes. Well, that's good. He could represent me. Just what I was thinking, sir. And, uh, here, have, have a look at this, uh, ladies' badminton trophy. Uh, see how the, uh... <laughs> See how the little plastic lady is positioned? She looks dirty. <laughs> uh, I'm sure she is, sir. You know what they say about badminton players. So if I just snap her off there and then <clears throat> jam her in between the snooker player and the table, uh, it, uh, it, it looks like they're in some sort of erotic clinch. It does, doesn't it? They look like they're having a whale of a time. <laughs> One top-of-the-range sex trophy, sir. Oh, there you are, darling. I've been looking all over the... Well, what's that? It's my sex award, remember? Just in from China. <laughs> I thought you were making that up to impress me. Nope. Won it fair and square by being the best in the world at shagging. <laughs> oh, gosh. We should probably get home then, shouldn't we? Come on. <laughs> Hail Caesar. Hail Nicholas. No, you, you don't hail me. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> Sorry. Should we try that again? Hail Caesar. Hello. Um, <laughs> that was perfect. Mighty Caesar, your council has devised two further ploys to ensure the success of your forthcoming parley with Cleopatra. You mean on top of the hail thing? Which was perfect. Yes, henceforth you're to refer to yourself only in the third person. Right. OK, so... I... what? No. What? So, instead of saying, I am listening, you say, Caesar is listening, or, or Caesar listens. Makes you seem more... Mental? Important. <laughs> right. So, I... No, Caesar. I thought I was Caesar. Stop saying I. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, sorry. He sees. That's perfect. <laughs> so, so, you say he, or one, or, or Caesar. Makes you seem more imposing. Right. Um... I see. So, you uh, want me uh, to... No. Oh, you want Caesar, him, you want him... That's it. ...to seem more aloof. I get it. I... What? Mighty Caesar. Mighty Caesar. Nessus. Try that. What? Oh. Uh, Caesar is listening. What? Caesar is listening. I thought you were Caesar. No. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. Am I? But I thought... Uh, 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 uh. But Caesar thought... Oh, I get it. Uh. Oh, uh, I mean, he gets uh. it. He means he gets... Oh, OK, Caesar, from now on, every time you forget to refer to yourself in the third person, I'm going to blow on this reed. I don't. <laughs> Caesar understands. <laughs> What's this third person? New protocol. Ah, you bring news. Mighty Caesar, I bring you news... Oh, uh, he brings you news... Oh, uh, he brings... Sorry, him news. Nessus. Uh, I... Are we... Oh, no, ah, uh, he... Uh. Uh, but, ooh, I... Sorry, is it? What? What are you doing? We're all referring to ourselves in the third person. Yes. No. Are we? I mean, them. <laughs> no. No, you refer to yourself. I refer to myself. <laughs> he refers to himself. Who, me? No, me. I mean, him. 
Caesar. Oh, are you Caesar? Me. Oh, I see. No, 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 you're Caesar. Me? No. You? No, no you. You, Caesar. Me? <laughs> what? Oh, I get it. Shut up. No, it's very simple. Caesar is... Oh, I'm... <laughs> He's Caesar, and I'm... <laughs> him. He's... And you're... Who? Caesar. <laughs> Can't we have a gong if we get it right? No. Nicholas, just out of interest, what was the second piece of counsel for the forthcoming parley with Cleopatra? Ah, yes. Don't look down her top. <laughs> Caesar disagrees. <laughs> Peterson, come over here, quick. Peterson, psst, come over here. Shh. Phillips, I'm busy. This is important, really important. Oh, all right, they'll make it quick. So what I think it is? That's the effect of PWT4 on advanced amyloid proteins on the affected brain tissue. A significant shrinkage. A cure for Alzheimer's? It... It could be. Everyone, we could be on the brink of a massive breakthrough. Colin, guard the door. Stop it, you lot. Get back to your workstations. Monsieur Garnier will be furious if he sees what you've done. Be quiet, Leslie. This is exactly why I got into science in the first place. He's coming. Monsieur Garnier. Well, what the hell's going on here? Why are you scientists away from your places? This is the laboratoire, not a UNESCO conference. Sorry, Monsieur Garnier. And Phillips, what have we got here? I hope for your sake it's something new for the Garnier Fructis range. It isn't, Monsieur Garnier. It's, uh... What's that, Phillips? It, it isn't, Monsieur Garnier. It's, it's a potential cure for Alzheimer's, and. Oh, I get it. I get it. It's right again. Now listen up, scientists, and listen good. This is my laboratoire, and what I say goes. I don't want you lot wasting your time with medicines and whatnot. We went through that with Peterson and his perpetual motion device. <laughs> I ask you, does perpetual motion add anything to the Garnier Sleek and Shine series? <laughs> well, no, no, no Mr. Garnier. Garnier. And what do we want? New products in the Nutrice collection. Bang on, Leslie. And the invention of the word Nutrice, which sounds like nutrition but doesn't guarantee it, is one of the best things you've ever come up with. <laughs> But, Monsieur Garnier, we're scientists. We need to change the world. You've got the best scientific equipment money can buy. You employ 3,000 research staff. We've created 521 patents. This is the finest laboratoire in the Western Hemisphere. Surely we can... You can change the world with Garnier body cocoon and soft curl cream. <laughs> and if you can't take that... You know where the exit door to the laboratoire is. <laughs> yes, Monsieur Garnier. So, Phillips, are you staying or are you going? I'm staying, Monsieur Garnier. <laughs> Bargains, 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 all this week at diddle de -dee. There's only one week left before the new Trade Descriptions Act comes into force, and that means it's bargains, bargains, bargains week at diddle de -dee. Like these popcorn bacon octopus shapes in glitter, only 99p. This butter-coloured sandwich dressing, only 99p. And 12 litres of value water, now with no bits, only 99p. You can taste the savings at diddle de -dee. Glad to do it. Where's the kid? Jason's. Jason's? He's helping out. Oh. Right. He's helping. 
fucking hell. Susan asked after you. Who? Susan Levy. Ah, oh, right. Susan. Your brief reckons you've got a strong case. Does he? Enough. I've had it up to here. <laughs> I feel like you don't even see me anymore. <laughs> For a moment you do, but then you don't. going on? I want to tell you how I feel. I feel... I feel... trapped. I said I feel trapped. <laughs> Not just in this prison, but in a box. A glass box. And I feel like I'm walking against the wind. Sort of. And, and I feel like I'm dragging myself up with my two hands from, from this swamp. But I'm carrying this heavy weight. And I just wish I could turn it into a balloon and let go. But I feel like I'm being attacked by a swarm of bees. And, and I just wish I could show you how that feels. But I can't because I'm shit. <laughs>Christmas, sir, and a merry go-home day. Ah, yes, go-home day. The last day before Christmas. Such a lovely focus for celebration here at Amalgamated Perforations. But, of course, this is still a business day, coupled, I hope, with joyous celebration. Freshen your nog? Don't mind if I do, sir. <laughs> but, typically, there's been a last-minute crisis. We're on the verge of clinching a big deal with the Nigerian government. Niger area, sir? Yes, it's in the Niger area. Nigeria? How much of that have you had? <laughs> yes, the Nigerian High Commissioner and a delegation of Nigerian dignitaries will be here at four. They're a tremendously Christian people, Hennemore, and morbidly obsessed, even at this time of year, with the death of Christ for all our sins. So, obviously, in honour of the occasion, I've commissioned an enormous crucifix. Praise Santa. I was going to get you to organise a traditional Nigerian dark chocolate Jesus to be hammered onto it with butterscotch nails. But I thought knowing you will only end up with some sort of marzipan Buddha. Very wise, sir. On an unrelated note, the sexy ladies of the typing pool, incidentally, watch this. <laughs> what I've had put in instead of computers. They certainly are easy on the eye, sir. You monster! They're human beings, Hennemore! Quite right, sir. Anyway, those crumpets will be holding their annual reading of a Christmas carol and Christmas pudding eating go home day afternoon in their typing pool next door. I see, sir. They all dress up as ghosts to make it all the spookier and more festive, and at the climax of the event, which happens on the stroke of four, tradition dictates that the chief ghost, an eyeless ghost for added scariness, hurtles into the room from the corridor, douses the Christmas pudding with brandy, throws a match onto it and screams, Go home! Thus signifying the commencement of the entire gap. What luck, sir! Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Hennemore, because you're this year's chief ghost. Oh, woo, sir! Are you going to be sick? No, oh, sir. Should be fun, anyway. The only thing to watch out for is the complete sightlessness that the eyeless ghost costume induces. And I should be glad to keep you away from the delicate negotiations with the Nigerians. Not being rude, but that's exactly the sort of thing that you usually screw up. <laughs>
against this for, for months and months now, and I don't see an end to it. There's, there's no end to it. Can't you see? That's all I want. I don't know what you want anymore. <laughs> I know you don't, Clive, and that's Cut. why I... Oh, technical problems? <laughs> um, <clears throat> I... Duncan, I wonder if we could go again, but with this time with just a bit more emphasis on your line. Right you are, no problem. Susan, would you cue Duncan in? No problem. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. And um, action. There's no end to it. Can't you see? That's all I want. I don't know what you want anymore. <laughs> no, you don't, Clive. And that's Cut. what I... Wonderful. It's really chilling. Thanks. <laughs> um, it's great. I, I wonder if, just for me, we could rehearse that line a few times. Mm -hmm. um, what we're trying to get across is that um, for you in this relationship, you've just reached this hopeless point. Where I think we've all been there. Where you've just run out of options. It's like, I don't know what you want anymore. I don't know what you want anymore. <laughs> Good. But even more. It's like, I don't know what you want anymore. <laughs> I don't know what you want anymore. <laughs> Lovely, and it's definitely going in the right direction, but just really committed. I don't know what you want anymore. I don't know what you want anymore. <laughs> Mike, maybe, maybe I can help. Duncan, I think what Mike's looking for is something a bit more... I don't know what you want anymore. <laughs> Is that the kind of thing? Yeah, uh, not, not quite. Not quite. If anything, it's more, um... St I, I don't know what you want anymore! I, I don't know what you want anymore. I don't know what you want anymore. I, I don't know what you want anymore. I don't know what you want anymore! I don't know what you want anymore. I don't know what you want want any more. Right, it's tricky, isn't it? Um, should we? I think we're probably... Let, let's just cut the line. It's not working. Mike, Mike, I'm... I'm doing my best. I... I, I really am. It, it, it's, it's just... I don't know what you want anymore. <laughs>British emergency broadcasting system. Do not be alarmed by the smell. It's 17,000 new British hours since the event and time for the quiz broadcast. Hello, remain indoors and welcome. <laughs> Try to forget what you saw happening over there last time. <laughs> we think we've made it stop. So let's say a big remaining doors to our two survivors, Peter and Sheila. Peter, Sheila, you're the last remaining contestants, which leaves the game and, for all we know, civilization at a very interesting point. Thinking of breeding at all? We tried. <coughs> there was too much sick. <laughs> yes, since the event, sex is certainly a lot more vomity. <laughs> right, tonight's first round is charades. It's a one-on-one -on -one game with a chance to play for tonight's star prize, everything we've got left to eat. <laughs> Doesn't that look good in the circumstances? <laughs> So it really is all to play for. Peter, you're the weakest, so you go first. Join me. <laughs> Are you nervous? No, we all smell like this now. <laughs> <laughs> so we do. Try rubbing in some of the brown soap at night before doing up the face zips on your safety bag. <laughs> so, Sheila, you have to try and guess what Peter's miming. It, it could be a book, a film, or even a song. What is a book, a film, or even a song? <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> little remains. OK, I've got something. Excellent. Uh, one word. Oh, no, two words. It's second word. Oh, first word. <laughs> the. Right. the. The something. Good luck. Uh, What's he thinking of? Second word. Uh, two syllables. Second syllable. Uh, up. Outdoor land. <laughs> um, ceiling. Light. Stain. <laughs> vent. Vent. Uh, the something vent. The um vent. The 
Yes. Oh. Oh, no. Not that. I, I can't, can't say it. I need an answer. But, but if I say it, I might summon it. Gonna have to hurry you. Peter can have the food. Yay! What a good sport. Oh, your wife called and said she might pop in on the way home. My wife? What? Your wife, David. Why are you looking at me like that? My... I haven't got a wife. What do you mean, you haven't got a wife? Have you gone mental again? No. Have you? No. Well, what are you playing at, then? Your wife left a message saying she must... Stop saying my wife. I haven't got a wife. Look, don't take it out on me. If things aren't going well between you and your wife... Right, so who's my wife, then? What? Who's my wife? Who am I married to? Keely Hawes. <laughs> Keely Hawes? Yes. Keely Hawes is my wife. You're a lucky guy. Sorry, Keely Hawes, the, the actress who, who used to be in Spooks. Yes. And, and who married the guy who also used to be... No, no. Well, yes, but they, they split up and then she married you. Last year, it was in the papers. OK, so say I go along with this. I don't understand why you're fighting it, David. Because I have no memory. She's a what very so talented, I... beautiful woman. I agreed, but I, I can't help thinking Here that... Here she is. Hey, Robert. Hi, darling. Listen, he's just done a flying visit. Uh, bloody Andrew wants me to go in and read something for him, but there is last night's risotto in the fridge and that nice wine that Sarah bought us. And don't forget the man's coming but the tree. See? See? Well, I never. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think I might go for a nice fly. Oh, hang on. This is a dream, isn't it? Of course it's a dream. You dreamt the whole thing. <laughs> hey, I'm flying, David. Why aren't you flying? I, I can't fly. What do you mean you can't fly? It's your dream and you can't fly. Come on, David, why can't you fly? Yeah, David. Come on, I'm your dream woman. Come and fly with me. You're not my dream woman. What? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, but just because you happen to be in a dream... Oh, that's really nice. Are you all right, Keely? Well, I mean, I'm a bit... Well, you bastard. <laughs> it's not my fault. Come on, Keely. Let's fix you up with Martin Freeman. Really? Yeah. Which means a better outcome for everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my presentation on the Healthy Homes and Hospitals program, or... H, H, H. <laughs> Any questions? How do you say your acronym again? It's H, H, H. <laughs> Thought so. <laughs> It's pronounced H, not H. H. You can't shoot him just for that. I just did. Anyway, it's my company. I can do what I like. But we all signed the No Bullying in the Workplace pledge, which specifically bans physical violence. What did you say? I said it specifically bans physical violence. It's specifically, with an S, specifically. <laughs> Bloody hell, Tony! Will you stop shooting people for saying things wrong? You. What are you drinking? Oh, coffee. What type? It's an espresso. <laughs> the word is espresso. Stop it, Tony! Oh, come on, Luke. You know very well I killed my own wife for ironically saying mispronunciation. If I apply rigorous standards at home, I see no reason why the same standards shouldn't apply in the workplace. Why do you have to shoot them? Why can't you just sack them? Oh, oh. I never thought of that. <laughs> yes, I, I suppose I could. It's just the red mist tends to descend whenever I'm confronted with ignorami. Actually, Tony, I think you'll find it's ignoramuses. What? It's from the Latin, we are ignorant. That makes it a verb, not a noun. Oh, no. <laughs> what have I done? Blimey. At least that'll stop him shooting whoever he likes. It's whomever.